FDIC took control of Silicon Valley Bank yesterday. The agency says regulators will be working over the weekend to make sure that insured depositors will get up to $250,000 of their money on Monday when that bank reopens. ABC's Jaslyn Lee explains how this can affect you even if it didn't, if you, even if you didn't use that bank. Silicon Valley Bank, the nation's 16th largest bank, was shut down by the FDIC on Friday after depositors hurried to withdraw money amid concerns over the bank's health. All our money is in the bank. I don't know how we're going to do our payroll. Not well known outside Silicon Valley, the bank's customers are largely in the tech and venture capital space with branches in California and Massachusetts. The bank did business with companies like Shopify, ZipRecruiter, and Pinterest. In an SEC filing, a streaming provider Roku said it had $487 million, or 26% of its cash reserves with the bank. The company saying their deposits were largely uninsured. Adrian Mendoza runs a venture capital firm in Boston. Dollars were being pulled faster than the bank actually had. According to the FDIC, Silicon Valley Bank had approximately $209 billion in assets and $175 billion in deposits at the end of last year. The bank's collapse rattled financial markets. The Dow Jones finishing the week down more than 300 points. When banks experience financial losses, it is and should be a matter of concern. The FDIC, along with the Treasury Department, say they have a process to deal with bank failures like this, insisting the banking system has been shored up since the financial crisis 15 years ago. They have very good risk management since the financial crisis because of changes brought after the crisis. So I, I think the banking system is probably as strong as it's ever been. And it's important to note the FDIC is insured up to $250,000 per depositor. The FDIC announcing all insured depositors will receive their money no later than Monday. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, New York. Back here at home and happening right now, the San Antonio Zoo needs your help naming their two newest sloth pups. The boy and girl, a two-fingered sloth pups, have arrived to the world and now they're ready to be named. With a donation of just $5 per vote, you can get your name suggestion as one of the options. The money will benefit the zoo. Suggestions will be taken until March 26th. For a link to submit your names, just head over to ksat.com. I don't know why, but they look like a Harriet to me. Maybe Harry Harriet. and Harriet, Mork and Mindy. All that. Sally and Sam. Oh my goodness, look what. We can go all day. <laughs> We can go on all day, but hey, we got up to 92 degrees mm. right now out in San Antonio for the high. As for temperatures out there right now, it is still 90 degrees outside and winds are gusty from the south southwest at 20 miles per hour. Tonight, it'll be warm. Temperatures in the 70s this evening after sunset at 639, but don't forget overnight. Set those clocks forward, spring them forward. Speaking of spring, spring is in the air in the form of oak. Oak is high. Molds, hackberry and mulberry are low. Tomorrow may be the last best day to enjoy some time by the pool as we're expecting cooler weather. All details coming up. It got hot in a hurry and it has been a minute, Sarah, since Ooh. it has been this hot. It has been a while. It's been since October 15th mm. that we've seen high temperature as warm as 92. That was the, the high temperature today in San Antonio. Take a look elsewhere. We saw high up to about 94 in Pleasanton, 92 in Hondo. It was in the upper 80s in the hill country. But again, that 92 at the airport is the warmest since October 15th. That's 147 days. Yeah, but today is likely going to be the hottest day over the spring break as we're expecting a couple of fronts to move through. Take a look at current temperatures. In Del Rio, it's still 96 degrees this evening. 95 in Catula, 97 in Laredo, upper 80s across the hill country and near 90 around San Antonio. Here's a look at the humidity right now. It is humid outside. Dew points are in the 60s. That's in the muggy category, but you look out to the west, you can see out in Del Rio, Rock Springs, lower humidity humidity on the north side of a dry line. Well, we're going to get some of this drier air moving in tomorrow. Uh, take a look at the future cast dew point. A front is going to move through North Texas overnight tonight, approaching San Antonio early tomorrow morning. So dew points are going to fall from the 60s into the 40s and even into the 30s by tomorrow night. So even though it's still going to be warm tomorrow, we are not going to have the humidity around. It's actually going to feel pretty pleasant during the day tomorrow and a little bit 
bit on the breezy side. So as they take you through your KSAT 12 hour forecast, remember spring forward tonight. Sun is going to rise closer to 8 o'clock tomorrow morning when we'll be in the low to mid 60s. We'll have partly cloudy skies that'll give way to mostly sunny skies near 80 around noon and north winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze out there. 84 for the high. Tomorrow's going to be a good pool day, uh, but things are going to change for us as we head into the first part of next week. I'll show you that in a bit, but wake up temperatures around south central Texas, upper 50s in the hill country, near 60 degrees around San Antonio and out west. Then highs tomorrow, 90 in Del Rio, 92 in Carrizo Springs, but the 80s around San Antonio, upper 70s across the hill country. We'll show you that neighborhood view. It'll be in the 70s in Bulverde, Bernie, uh, 84 in Rio Medina, 84 here in San Antonio, 81 in New Braunfels and Seguin, and up to 90 degrees out near Yavaldi. Again, we've got much colder air to our north. Take a look at that. We're seeing a winter storm working its way through areas in Wisconsin and uh, Iowa. This is going to pull in colder air from the north. So again, tomorrow is going to be our warmest day of spring break after, of course, today. By Monday and Tuesday, we'll be in the 60s for the high. Wednesday and Thursday will rebound a little bit, but 70s for the high temperatures, so closer to average. And then, yes, an even more stronger front, an even stronger front is expected to arrive Thursday night into Friday. That'll keep our highs struggling to get out of the 50s by Friday and Saturday. So this is a jam-packed forecast that I want to walk you through again. Again, tomorrow, comfortable 84, low humidity. Monday and Tuesday will be in the 60s after mornings in the 40s. A few sprinkles on Monday, an isolated shower Tuesday, not amounting to much. We warm up Wednesday and Thursday. And then on Thursday, I am watching for some storms. That strong is that front is going to be so potent that it could kick up a few storms Thursday night. And then mornings on Saturday could be in the 30s around San Antonio, perhaps even a light freeze across the hill country. A lot to uncover again in the forecast coming up of the night beat as well. An exciting spring forecast for spring break. Thank you, Sarah. All right, you can't accuse the Spurs of tanking when they get a big win like they got the other night against Denver. That's right. Most people would have expected them to get blown out, and it looked like they were going to early in the first quarter, but the Spurs picked up a big win thanks to a new acquisition. We come back, we'll hear from the newest Spurs face, plus SAFC getting ready to defend their title tonight. Got a preview next. It felt great. You know, the fans were really into it. Uh, we put him to sleep in the first quarter, but then we woke him up a little bit. So it was great to have all those people there yelling and screaming. They deserve to have a good night. The young Spurs picked up an impressive win at home last night in big board sports. Our San Antonio Spurs have now won three of their last five games thanks to last night's surprising home win over the current top-seeded Denver Nuggets. Nikola Jokic was sensational as usual, finishing with 37 points, 11 rebounds, and 11 assists. But the silver and black proved that they could play a full 48 minutes against the best in the West. Keldon Johnson led the starters with 23 points, while Doug McDermott had 20 off the bench. But the Spurs got a huge spark from new acquisition Sandro Mamukelashvili. A Georgia native, that's the European country, not the state, scored all 11 of his points in the fourth quarter to help the Spurs win 128 to 120. This is his second game here in San Antonio since being claimed off waivers, and he's dreamed of this experience for a while. I always wanted the Spurs jersey. Grew up in Europe. Um, you know, all this unbelievable foreign players your guys had and developed and won championships with. So I used to always watch him. You know, you guys had Manu, Tony, Boris Diaw, you know, all the, all the foreign guys. And, you know, it, it was unbelievable just watching how fluid they played and how hard they played. So definitely, like, just going to Europe, like, I feel like Georgia has really big fan base of San Antonio. So, you know, I feel like when they heard I was coming here, they were really excited. Viva Mamu. The Spurs will next take on the Thunder tomorrow night at 6 p.m. This year's State Boys Basketball Tournament was not kind to the San Antonio area. All four teams bowed out in the state semis. The last to fall was the Brennan Bears, who gave the reigning Class 5A state champs Beaumont United all they could handle in this year's Class 6A state semifinals. After trailing by double digits for a significant portion of the second half, Brennan pieced together a thrilling fourth quarter rally and had multiple chances to win the game, including a look at the game winner at the buzzer. They just couldn't quite get it done in a heartbreaking 60 to, excuse me, 
70 to 68 loss. Freshman Isaiah Ward led the team with 26 points and 14 rebounds, while sophomore Kingston Flemings had 14 points. This is a very young team that nearly took down one of the state's best. And despite a slow start, they were well prepared for what the Timberwolves had to offer. Everything they beat us by was in the scout. We've been scouting them all week, and uh, we said I mean, physicality, offensive boards. First half, they had to have a, at least 15 offensive boards. That's really what kept them in the game and ended up winning the game. So just staying in the scout, coming physical. Yeah, it was the first time here. Of course, there was nerves, all that. We didn't come ready to play at all. We brought it back. We brought it back in the second half. We had a, a great second half, but I feel like next year when we're back, it's not going to be the same. It was a really great experience. You know, it's my first time doing this. You know, uh, it teaches me a lot. It teaches me to be. Uh, accountable in the moment and uh, as for them you know they're gonna be they're gonna do great things uh, going forward I expect to see them back here next year and the following year Robert Jackson is one of three seniors ending their careers in the Alamo Dome. The Bears will return 11 players from this year's roster. On the flip side of that coin, Bernie returned to the 4A semifinals for the third straight season and once again bowed out after an incredible performance. This time, the Greyhounds came up short in a loss to Booker T. Washington High School 75-69. Seven seniors played their final high school game on the Alamo Dome court and four of them actually played in Bernie's football state championship game back in December. The end result might not be what they dreamed, but they've made their community proud. We set our bars high going to state and try to go f football and basketball, and we did both. And it's been one heck of a ride, and you know, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else. And it's fun getting to hang it up at the very last end with everybody. You won the region, and then you come back, and you have everybody back. You know, the expectation is probably to do it again. And to play in front like that and, and to, to not just, you know, you have to meet expectations because you can't lower them. <laughs> you have to meet them. Uh, and for these guys, 16, 17, 18-year-old guys, to always be the favorites and have to meet those, those expectations, just so proud of them uh, for what they've done. Uh, this, is, this is one heck of a team. It's one heck of a group. Uh, these seniors here have done just a fantastic job for us at Bernie High School in all different phases, not just, not just in basketball, but all over the place. Nine Greyhounds will return to their roster next year. One year after flaming out in the conference quarterfinals, the Texas Longhorns are playing for the Big 12 title today. Number 7 Texas defeated number 22 TCU last night 66-60. Dylan DeSue and Christian Bishop each scored 15 points to lead the Horns. This is their second championship game appearance in the last three seasons. Let's take a look at the scoreboard right now because the Longhorns are facing Kansas as we speak. They currently lead 17-13 in the first half. We'll have highlights from this one tonight on the night beat after the game. Months ago, San Antonio FC was celebrating their first USL championship at Toyota Field. Tonight, they returned to the pitch for the first time as defending champs, ready to kick off a brand new season. So, what's the Mentality Monsters mentality heading into their season opener against Oakland Roots? Well, we got to do what we do, which is win. So, you know, we compete for every ball, we compete for every action. We've uh, brought a lot of the same guys that knew how to do that and won a championship and we've added some pieces that are going to make us even stronger so um, you know it's just the same habits we've been training every week that's going to have to show on the field and if we do that we're going to be successful. Kickoff tonight 7 30 anxious to see how they're going to celebrate last year's before the game. It'll be fun to see them defend the chip this year. Yes it will. All right we'll see you later Andrew. We'll be back right after this. That's going to do it for us for the News at 5. Thanks so much for watching. We'll hope to see you back here for the Night Beat after NBA basketball. Whenever they're done, we'll be on right after that. We'll see you then.